want to get deals that are on market but you have no idea how to talk to real estate agents, check out how Nathan Valley and David Lamorte, who we're working with, are striving to get deals using Privy and getting them on market. Check out the exact process of how we do it right here on this call. All right, so these are from from David. I had him forward me the email so that I can look at what he's got and I'm gonna walk through. So this is from yesterday for all the filters and stuff you got set up uh, in Tampa and the Tampa areas. So let's start at the bottom here. Now your buyers, have they given you a range as far as like price point, what prices they like to be at? So there's kind of a big range of three to 600 as far as ARV, but as far as purchasing price, it seems they want to purchase between 100, like purchase at 100 to like 220 seems to be like where they want to purchase at, especially for flips in like the 350 area. Okay, got it, got it. So sort of similar to Orlando, they they want to be at that like probably ideally that that three four hundred ish ARV. Sounds like you got a few people that are willing to go a little bit higher on ARV. That's awesome. <clears throat> they want to buy at one hundred. I'll be honest, man. I think I think everybody wants to buy at one hundred <laughs> in Tampa. Yeah. Similar to Orlando, they they have, if we're able to get stuff, um, they probably realistically want to be closer to the low twos would be my guess. So guys, these are all things as, as to why we want to kind of establish relationships with our buyers first, because these are important things we want to learn before we start spending a bunch of money and trying to find deals. Okay, this is not really what we're looking for. House is in great condition. What I'm doing here, David, is I am looking at what properties, you know, now in the email, when we click on 13 properties, you know, it'll bring up the privy tab with all 13 of those properties. And so what I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm like, okay, which of these properties look like there is an opportunity for there to be some motivation? There's a few things we look at. One is, you know, as a wholesaler, as investors, the number one thing that's the easiest is it needs work done to it. So as we're looking at these, I'm not seeing a whole ton. Now, this is also my first time kind of really getting a feel for Tampa. So I'm looking for our, you know, what properties look like they have an opportunity for us to add value to it. So this property, you know, kitchen could definitely use updating. Not a bad house by by any means, but um, this thing could, you know, use a little bit of TLC, a little bit of updating. Yeah, I like this a lot. Now, I I price is the last thing I ever look at. Number one thing I look at is, you know, first I just double check and make sure it's a property, you know, beds, baths, square footage, all that good stuff that my buyers would be remotely interested in. So first thing I'm looking at is pictures, right? Is there is there an opportunity for us to add value? Second thing we want to look at is how long has it been listed, right? It's only been listed for two days. And then I'll take a peek at price. Now, if this has been listed for 60 days, you know, it just gives me a lot more information. And then I take a quick peek at the property remarks. I love that Privy has this right here. Uh, Clearwater Home. So looking for things just like this. Great opportunity for your next cosmetic remodel project. Boom. This probate property. Oh, they even throw it in there. Being sold cash only. So literally the description is inviting us to give them a call. It's, hey, cash buyers. Hey, wholesalers. Investors, please give us a call. You are the people we are looking for. Awesome. Love it. Love everything that's going on here. The sale is subject to final probate approval. Highest and best offers due by 9 a.m. Monday. So this property, probably not going to have a whole lot of room for us to really be able to negotiate, but we're going to call them up and we're going to call Jamie up here. So down here is where they've got um, the brokerage and the agent that is listing the property. And so we just copy that. And then we're going to paste that right into Google. <clears throat> and then, you know, I'll click on like one of the first ones here, realtor.com. And we're looking for their, their mobile cell phone number. Don't typically want to call the office. I want to get directly to them. All it's right, mobile. let's call Jamie here. All right, come on, Jamie. This is Jamie. Hey, Jamie, this is Nathan. How you doing? Not bad. How about you? I'm doing good, thanks. I uh, I was calling about a listing I saw here of yours on, uh, on Hoy Ave. Yes. My guess is your your phone's probably been been melting. <laughs> uh, you might be right about that. I uh, I was just calling to see if you had a couple minutes to chat about it. Sounds like I might have caught you in the middle of something though. No, it's okay. Oh, perfect. Yeah, Jamie, I'm looking at it as a potential investment opportunity. I was wondering if you could just tell me a little bit about it. Anything in particular that you think would be important for someone like me to know? Its highest potential is a total and complete remodel. Roof, windows, AC, tear up the kitchen, new flooring, and paint. Okay. 
So you're thinking for this property, yeah, it'd be best to kind of go with the full, full, full rehab? That's what I would do. What do you feel is kind of the best fit for it? Do you think it's a better fit to rehab it, do it really nice, and then you know look to list it back on the market after kind of everything's been done to it? Or do you think this property might be a better fit as a, as a rental? I think you could actually go either way. If you were doing it as a rental, you'd probably make more money long term by not going quite as high end on the remodel. Uh, but there's money to be made either way. It's in a nice enough location that you could go Martha Stewart and get top dollar, which between my research and the comments of other agents that have talked about it, some of them think it's going to go to 430. One person thinks higher. I'm, I'm confident it would go to 420, possibly higher. Okay. So you think if it was, it, if the rehab was done well and done nice, it, it, it could list and sell on the back end for around 420, 430 ish? Yep. <clears throat> okay. That's my professional opinion. And I don't have a horse in the race, so. <laughs> Got it. Has there been kind of any recent properties in neighbor neighborhood kind of similar to this one that have, you know, kind of pulled some prices like that? Yes. Okay, nice. Yeah, you wouldn't happen to know the address off the top of your head by any chance, would you? Nope. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go into that much detail with you over the phone if I did, just to be completely honest. Oh, got it. Why, 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 why is that? Well, I mean, you're, you're picking my brain. You know, I, I don't want somebody else relying on information that I've given. I'd be more interested in hearing what you have to say and I'll happily agree or disagree. I'm very, very old school when it comes to that. Plus, I've got probably 70 phone calls from investors, all similar conversations to this and you know, ultimately, anything that I tell one person, I've got to tell every other person because I'm not going to be in a position to willingly or unwillingly give any one person the, an advantage over the others and put my own real estate license in jeopardy. Got it. Got it. So I'm I'm, I'm catching at the tail end of the the, the hundred conversations. Yes, <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little worn out, but I still have three more days to go. Totally, totally understand, Jimmy. I uh, I promise I'll, <laughs> I'll do my best to make it as painless as possible. My goal isn't to to waste your time, and I'm I'm sure you know, especially when it comes to investors, I'd get it out of a hundred calls. Probably half of them are you know making offers at like 180 or just you know something silly. Well, the majority of the offers have been in excess of the asking price, which only makes sense. That's fantastic. The, the MLS price is just a, a sign that says, come look at it. Yeah. For this property, um, I know, I mean, kind of twofold. One, you know, I'm, I'm interested in it. I, it's kind of perfect fit for what I'm looking for. Um, but of course, at the same time, I know you, you're going to have absolutely no trouble selling it. You know, you've already got kind of a bunch of offers over asking. My goal is I, I don't want to waste your time, Jamie, you know, or mine. You know, my goal isn't to insult you or the sellers, you know, with uh, with a low offer or an offer that's less than what they were looking for. I guess my question is where, where would I realistically need to be at in order to be competitive? The most specific I will be, and I won't be any more specific than that, is that the first number is going to have to be a three. Okay. No, that's that's totally fair. I, I appreciate you giving me that much info because, yeah, like I said, you know, my goal isn't to waste your time or mine. And then aside from price, obviously, you know, doing the highest, best price is, is the number one thing. Um, that's my goal. Other than that, is there anything else of importance, you know, other nothing, than... Nothing whatsoever. Uh, you know, it's everything where is, as is. So you know, there will not be any input from the seller regarding, you know, cleaning up the property or making any repairs as you might expect. And it's the, the probate court will dictate you know, whether it takes two weeks or three weeks or four weeks for the the judge just to have it on his docket to rubber stamp the approval. It's strictly in a state. There's no emotion to it. And my job is strictly to, to present the highest net to the probate that's real. I do have a couple of offers that are not real, but I've been in the business long enough to know the difference. <laughs> mm, when you say not, not real, what, what do you mean? Somebody that comes in with an unusually high number <laughs> and a low good faith deposit with a inspection period. Oh, uh, you know, what I want to do is be able to yeah. lock the property up and then attempt to renegotiate it. That's what I call not real. Right now, right there with you. Yeah, all these, all these places, you know, Tampa. I know you guys got a ton of them uh, where you'll get wholesalers that'll call you up and they'll, they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I, we 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 can pay you know four hundred or something," and they're like, "Oh, but we want to you know hundred dollar earnest money, thirty day due diligence period." <laughs> no, I. I, I the title company, right? right. Yeah, right. In fact, uh, we also will not allow any wholesaling with anybody that makes an offer that is subject to uh, reassignment will not be considered. 
Yeah, nope, totally understand. Nope, no problem there. The one last thing I, I, I'd love to throw out to you, Jamie, is, you know, I got to I gotta crunch the numbers and look at things on my end. And I think I, if I'm able to get in that ballpark, I'll definitely be giving a call back and, and let you know where I can make my offer at. When I do that, though, I, I am calling unrepresented. So I if it's okay with you, I, I would love for you to be able to, you know, represent me and, and keep both sides of the commission. Or if you'd like to offer any of that as a discount, totally up to you. But if that's okay with you, love, love to do that. Well, just take it as case basis. Um, I'm fine to represent anyone that's unrepresented. My goal is not to increase my commission, but I will gladly make more commission if I can. So no, I, I, I love it. You are not be any more transparent than that. <laughs> right, right. No, I love it, Jamie. I, um, no, I appreciate your time. Don't, don't let me take up any more of your time. I, I know uh, you probably got a couple missed calls already. One last thing. I, you don't happen to have any other properties, maybe anything similar to this, whether, I don't know, if it's listed or it's going to be coming, coming up soon. Anything that would be, you know, similar to this or could use a little bit more work. I, I do have another one that's very similar to this, but the seller has already gone three months longer than what he told me he would on, you know, there are a brother and a sister, like a son and a daughter, both of them have some emotional attachments and they're just dragging their feet. So I, I really couldn't say I've had people calling me for the past four months, <laughs> ask me about it. And as far as I can tell, it's probably going to take them another three or four months at the minimum. Would it be helpful to you at all if I were able to make an offer on that property that you could present to them, but it was contingent on no. them? Okay, that wouldn't help them at all? Got nothing's it. Gonna, nothing's going to move them. They're fully aware that the property's most likely going to be worth more money whenever they get around to turning me loose on it. So it's a, they don't have too much kind of um, motivation to, to move their feet kind of thing. Apparently not. No, most people would, but they have other things that are more important to them than how quickly they can split up the money. Well, yeah, I'll tell you, Jamie, I'll tell you what, um, this is my personal cell phone number. If it's all right with you, I'll shoot you a text when we hop off here so that you have it. Feel free to hang on to my number, you know, love to chat with you if you ever have a property or such. And I, I do a lot than just kind of purchasing cash is just one kind of thing I'm able to, to bring to the table. But, you know, any properties, any situations, you know, and it's I keep things very simple. You know, I, I don't kind of tag things along, you know, I can let you know, hey, if I'm able to make something work, here's what it could look like. And if not, you know, I'll let you know that too but yeah i'd say please save my save my um cell phone let's keep in touch and um you know love to reconnect at some point and see if i can put together a strong offer for you on this property that sounds great let's do it all right jamie thank you so much for your time i, I hope your phone's not too busy this weekend uh, no problem thanks for the call all right have a good one jamie you too bye-bye bye-bye come on that's what i'm that's talking about come on. You like that video hit that like button thank you